maybe the prettiest phones of 2023. So folks, I goofed super hard. Vivo sent these two phones my way for me to take on a test drive, the V27 Pro and the standard V27. I got both of these phones and I'm going through the uh, the details on what I'm supposed to do to review them. And I got my embargoes mixed up. I thought the V27 was already lifted and I thought the V27 Pro was lifting now-ish. So I held off on coverage of this phone when really I could have been talking about it all this time. I'm not gonna make this a combo video. I actually do have a comparison plan just to kind to detail some of the differences between these two, but I've been spending a lot more time with the V27 Pro, so this is going to be a bit more of a longer term look at using <laughs> this phone. I've got them both in front of me right now because as we jump into a conversation about style and design and aesthetic, if you watched any of my previous videos, I think you might know where I'm about to go with the comparison of these two phones. Why I think they're so pretty. The overall look and shape and feel is ultra ultra slim. This is one of the skinniest feeling phones I think I've handled this year. We've got curves and tapers from the screen and the back plate with this hard rail. It feels really thin in your fingertips. It feels a little similar to another phone that I very much enjoyed. This is the LG Velvet from a couple years ago and the V27s managed to be even just a little bit skinnier than the Velvet. But the whole aesthetic is can we trick your fingers into thinking that they're holding just the thinnest of rails. The look of the phone is really really, really slick, but I would be nervous actually taking this out into the field. They have a bumper case that comes in the box. My entire time with the V27 Pro was spent with the phone in this case, just so I could get a better grip on it. Your mileage will vary. These are very fashionable devices. They kind of remind me a little of sort of the, uh, the glory days of Huawei P series phones. We're going to talk about performance and cameras and screens and haptics and fingerprint sensors and all that jazz, but there is one very specific unique feature that is a design accent. It's an aesthetic that these two devices, I think is pretty cool. I'm not sure I've seen it a whole lot before. Really glad Vivo sent along both of these phones so I could get a feel for them. There's a satin e-finish on the, uh, the pro model phone here, and there's a glossier finish on the regular V27. And when we look a little bit closer to the V27, it's a bit more of a gradient from lighter to darker with these little accents and lines and colors that make it look like marble. It's a really pretty look. We've seen these kinds of design differences on phones before different textures, different finishes. But I mentioned that Vivo has done something kind of special here, and that's these things react to the sun. If you're a 90s kid like I was, you remember hypercolor t-shirts. In our little review kit, they sent along this flashlight. It's got like a little blue light on it. They also react to the sun, and you can get in there. You do a little smiley face just with the light on the back of your phone. Ditto the Pro with this more satin finish. You can get this real dark blue going on and you can see how it even interacts with like the little ring. You get kind of like a, a black light effect, sort of a, a blue color strobe that goes in there. Painting with some light, painting with some light. So it's kind of like you got two phone colors for the price of one. Something like this is just fun. It's a little different. It's not gonna totally change your experience using the phone, but it does kind of catch the eye. You pull the phone out of your pocket and if it hits sunlight, then it starts changing color. Then I have the case on it. So I'm holding the phone and I'm just kind of using it and I'm turning it over. I'm trying to get B-roll shooting it out in sunlight. Like, man, my fingers are just all smudgy on the back of this cheap bumper case. What I hadn't realized was my fingers had been blocking some sunlight, so it was streaking the back of the phone. I held it out just for a little bit longer and sunlight hit the whole back and it got that real rich, deep, dark blue. Like I said, it's a little different. I think that's kind of fun. I'll just kind of move this over here to, to the side of the frame and just kind of let it sort of calm back down again. This one actually holds on to the color longer than the Pro model does. And flipping the Pro over, we've got an acceptable in-display fingerprint sensor. It's one of the only aspects of the phone that does feel a little more mid-ranger or entry level. <laughs> it's not nearly as bad as the in-display fingerprint sensor was on the Velvet that I held up recently, but it, it is a little pokier and it's a little finickier, and especially for something so tall and thin and skinny, making sure you really land the thumb placement on that fingerprint sensor. It's not my favorite. Ditto the sort of haptic feedback when we're kind of using this on the keyboard or when you're navigating around the UI. It's one of those older style motors that has a bit of the fuzz, 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 fuzz. but it's not the most articulate feel. And for this being a decently powerful motor, I prefer having maybe even a little less power, but really sharp and precise haptic responses to what I'm doing 
across the UI. This is running the current build of FunTouch OS on top of Android 13. This is where I get to kind of reiterate that joke that I've had with previous Vivos and IQ phones, where this is a heavily skinned Android device, but FunTouch is kind of becoming one of the least fun skins. It's a little bit more straightforward. A lot of this interaction still feels significantly more like you're going back to Android 11. Now, if you're a fan of the smaller toggles in your notification shade, for example, that's actually kind of a good thing, but it doesn't have quite the same bouncy or animated feel as what we might be seeing from a Xiaomi or an Oppo these days. It's tough to complain though, because the performance on this has been absolutely fantastic. We're talking roughly a ballpark around 400 to 450 euro, depending on the configuration that you're shopping this and the region that you might be buying this in. We've got Got so many of those really fun bells and whistles like the 120 hertz oled that's just table stakes at this point we just expect that a decent mid-ranger phone is going to have this kind of control these kinds of options to play with i've become a really big fan of vivo phones i think they represent a terrific value but we should also just briefly mention they do come with quite a bit of additional value added software i mean it's never a huge surprise that we see facebook that's pre-installed but then we also have services that are sort of masquerading as folders in your app drawer I've been using this phone for a while, but I purposely left this in here where usually I clear this kind of stuff out. You start top tapping on hot apps or hot games, and really that's sort of a lead-in. That's an entry into another app store for you to interact with other sort of services that you can pick up through Vivo. Depending on your region, that might be a value or that might be a benefit, but for a lot of the apps that I use, it usually just sort of gets in the way. It's a little bit of extra clutter. Plus services like Snapchat and Spotify, things that I don't really use that much, also pre-installed. So when you go through, it's pretty easy. Easy. Hold on, if I go into app info, most of these are easily uninstallable or you can just shut down the, the sort of Vivo app selection if you don't want those kinds of notifications. But out of the box, it takes a little bit of pruning to get that back down to a cleaner overall experience. Internationally, we've been seeing some great options arriving with these Dimensity chips. This one specifically, the Dimensity 8200. Just a fun beast of a mid-ranger SoC. It's a core configuration very similar to some of those chips that we absolutely adore, those classics like the Snapdragon 865. And unfortunately, I just don't know how to conceptualize these numbers right now. Geekbench is updated from Geekbench 5 to Geekbench 6. So now we've got these numbers and they look like goodly, big lead numbers. Genuinely, we're talking about synthetic benchmark performance on a mid-ranger phone. I believe that this is significant <laughs> overkill compute power for people that are just covering the basics like good average consumers. Tech nerds like me, we're, we're starting to have some of those really sensitive conversations about how much horsepower do you really need in a phone? I've always been an advocate of trying to displace some of your computer work by using a smartphone. These things have gotten ridiculously powerful. They've gotten really good at things like editing and rendering 4K video. The, the price range that this is gonna sell in, obviously a significantly more expensive phone is going to outperform this for something like a race on rendering high resolution, or excuse me, ultra HD video. Maybe a phone is twice as expensive, but it probably won't finish a compute task like video rendering twice as fast. And the fact that this phone gets a lot of that work done in what I feel is a reasonable amount of time, especially compared to like transferring footage, like if you shoot video from the phone and edit it on the phone, it still might be faster than having to transfer footage to another device. Well, I think we're in really good shape. I, I think we're flush for compute power right now. I, I really don't vibe with these arguments like, oh, you got to buy a premium phone if you want a future proof because apps are going to get harder to use. I don't know who, who out there are using apps harder than this. Multi-track 4K video rendering. I think you're going to be fine. Something I think people are going to identify with a, a lot more than my my penchant for video rendering. But uh, gaming has, has been a decent exercise here. I, again, I think we need to keep our expectations in check given the, the price tier of the phone. But I've been playing with these kinds of games like uh, Dust and Neon. This is on, on Netflix, the Netflix game store. And it is kind of a, a bit more demanding than you think it would be just for a, a fun, silly, Western-themed, sci-fi, top-down, twin-stick shooter. But I've been keeping above 30 FPS for a good chunk of this game, and the playability is better than I was expecting it to be in this price tier. I really haven't felt let down or that there are going to be a bunch of titles that I wouldn't be able to play when we're talking about kind of pushing the limits a little bit on our favorite mobile titles. Now, this is the one that kind of blows my mind. I, I've done this test a lot. This is a game called Undead Horde. Again, not the most graphic 
like graphics rich or intense kind of gameplay, there's a ton of CPU melting elements with how many uh, little minion that you have to control. It's more a unit management game than it is like a real graphics intense or open world kind of game. This is playing at the top graphics settings for Undead Horde and the phone is getting noticeably warm as we're going through and I'm controlling all these little beasties here. But this is a game that can often make premium tier Xiaomi and Samsung devices struggle. Like you'll see that lag and that dip in frame rate where as the Vivo's running warm, the MediaTek is hanging with and giving me a very fluid frame rate. Again, much higher than I would have expected given the, the price tier of this phone. <laughs> I always have to highlight, game reviewing isn't one thing. There are a bunch of games out there. You might like some titles, you might not like others. And only testing for one or two games, like if you're only testing COD and Genshin, then you don't really get a good sense of what a phone can do for different types of games. And with all of this activity going on on the screen, I'm only occasionally seeing little dips or little chugs to that frame rate. This is fantastic. Shifting gears, we are gonna spend a little time talking about the cameras. Um, I don't love the table wobble, the, the waka 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 that we get on these asymmetrical camera sensors. I'm gonna put it in the case. It still wobbles in the case, but it, it's a little flatter when you're just touching most of the phone and it only kind of tips here at the corner. It is kind of interesting. The case has one of those USB-C port covers. I, I don't know, do people like those? I feel like they sometimes get in the way. Drop me a comment. Do you like USB-C port covers on your bumper cases? And smash that bell icon on your way down to the comments. This is a Vivo and I loves me a Vivo for them cameras. We've got a great main sensor on the back of this phone here. It's one of the one over 1.56 inch type image sensors. Increasingly just seeing more and more of this tech make it down into more mainstream focused phones has been really exciting. It's a camera sensor that's roughly the same size as what we used to see as something exotic. A lot of the Vivo image processing goes hand in hand with um, expectations from previous reviews on its own. So like this is a JPEG I took of this yellow daisy here. You can see how it kind of highlights, it kind of pops those yellow petals. I had to go in and give it just a subtle exposure tweak to kind of bring in a richer, there's a richer yellow to this daisy. I feel like that's one of the main things you always kind of experience on Vivo is their penchant for maximizing brightness. In so many instances, in so many situations, what the camera app is gonna try to do is really bring up that exposure, but then find HDR solutions for painting in any detail that might've been lost to uh, exposure or color clipping. But I really gotta highlight this. This is a, a pretty mainstream sensor. And what this photo right here is a 1.5 times zoom crop from the main sensor. And when we really blow this image up, there is so much detail preserved and maintained in this image. The image integrity is very clear. These images are very good for whittling down and cropping. It's not quite sharpening, but it's more of like a structure, that kind of contrasty structure that goes into a lot of like your fine detail petals and flowers and leaves. We know that this tier of SOC is, is pretty powerful, but one of the main differences between this V27 and a more expensive Vivo, more advanced image stabilization. We see a really clean floating uh, image stabilization, software stabilization when we're shooting 4K at 30 frames per second. Now for a mid-ranger, I was really happy to see that we still have access to 4K 60. There's really no reason why this SOC can't handle 4K 60, but unfortunately that's one of their dividing lines. So now we don't get that really smooth, beautiful, lush uh, image stabilization in 4K 60. And when you're shooting at 60 frames per second, these little steps and judders are even more maddening when you try to look at that video on a larger screen. One of the areas where a Vivo always comes in clutch is in low light performance. Totally blacking out my office. This is a manual mode photo. You can kind of see it's a little soft. The, the, uh, the shutter speed was a little long and the JPEG is definitely trying to scrub out some of that extra ISO noise. This is not like an X series Vivo, which is all about like crazy high-end photography. But even taking this and going to a two second exposure in the night mode, that is stunning performance for a two second exposure, being able to bring up this much more information, preserving the texture of the fur on this little stuffed animal and radically reducing 
sort of the noise and grain in this photo. They've definitely earned a reputation for being some of the absolute best low light performers in their class. Now, I've been splitting a lot of time between the 27 Pro and the regular V27. I never really feel as comfortable commenting on things like battery life when I'm starting to get some limited support on some of these phones for 5G in my neighborhood, but I don't feel it's, I don't feel it's really indicative of what someone who buys and owns this phone in the market that it's intended for is really going to experience. And especially because I live way out in the burbs and we have mediocre LTE and okay 5G connectivity in my neighborhood. That being said, for my use in this battery capacity, I was easily able to rock this little lower power mid-ranger Dimensity SoC well into the evening. My kind of use is really message heavy. I like to listen to a lot of podcasts. There's a lot of screen off activity. And then I'm constantly tapping into the cameras to get fun shots of stuff that's going on around me. But the last thing to highlight, if you notice, we're still getting the chunky boxes from companies like Vivo. We like the chunky boxes because chunky boxes come with features. I have been showing you there's a, a nice little bumper case that, that comes with the phone. This might not be the case you really want to live with, but out of the box, you are able to use it. Pre-installed screen protector, that's really nice. And when we're talking about power management and battery life, when you run this phone down, in the box is this delicious 80 watt charger. So not only can this charge significantly faster than a Galaxy S or an iPhone 14, you didn't have to spend extra to get the properly compliant charger to line up with the fast charging features on this Vivo. They gave it to you in the box. <laughs> Immediately, if you're going to compare this phone against, say, like a Galaxy A series, you automatically have to add the price of a nicer charger in that comparison. It's not oranges to oranges until you add some accessories to your Galaxy A purchase. Oh, folks, I just can't tell you how embarrassed I was when I, I was going through all of my emails and like, man, when does the embargo for this phone lift? And it had already lifted like a couple weeks ago. I've been spending so much time really trying to kind of craft these conversations and, and do fun things with them, but genuinely, we are so flush for good options in the mid-range or Android space right now. And these two are definitely unique solutions that totally tackle well beyond that daily lifestyle user experience. I, I'm, I'm really kind of curious to see what people's thoughts are because I, I just think that this is so cool adding just a fun little design accent tweak to the back of the phone, something that people might not really have ever seen before. And it's it's just something to talk about. It's something to share and kind of show it off. Like, hey, watches my phone, changes color in the sun. Please enjoy my embarrassment as I also prep for another video, just kind of talking about this Vivo landscape and the standard V27, which that embargo has lifted. And so I'm, I'm behind on this phone now where I was thinking I was gonna be catching up on this phone. Ah, oh, these things are just so cool cool. They're so pretty. They're so much fun. So stay tuned, folks. Plenty more to talk about. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to my channel. All the support lately has been absolutely fantastic. Those of you who are clicking on links down below my video, if you're catching my home site, somegadgetguy.com, or if you're joining the list of names, scrolling by on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. This list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals in the universe. So I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at Some Gadget Guy, I do my podcast on the Twitch. I'm spending more time on the Mastodons. I'm trying to revive a Flickr account to share a few more of these photos and samples from some of our fun, even mid-ranger phones. But, uh, you know, I spend a lot of time with the premium tier stuff too. Not so much on the Facebooks or the Instagrams, but I will catch you all on the next video.